All right, so cars mounted out, like mounted up, like I mentioned in the last video. Um, we're gonna extend today. We're extending the uh, the stems for the lug nuts. So these are the longer ones. So if you can see, actually, you know what? I think I have a factory one in here. I keep a whole bunch just in case I get a car with some broken ones. All right, so yeah, so here we go. Let's show you here. So that's the difference. So this is the aftermarket extended one. This is the factory one. So this is gonna give us probably about an inch of extra um, length to be able to put the, um, just to secure the wheels on there a little better. And I'm pretty sure people have mounted up wheels with factory lug nuts and factory studs just fine. Um, I think even on my car, I have the factory stems, um, but my wheels, I actually grab a little bit more threads than um, what's on these. So uh, let me grab you a part number. So if something you wanna do, uh, this is it here. It's a Dorman part number. 610.323.1 uh, M12 um, by one and a half. So this is it here. There, I want to say, so just the cost of AutoZone. They're like three bucks a piece. So I need 10 of them. Um, so let me show you what I saw when I was putting the control arms on. What prompted me to even go this route. All right, so. If you can see the diff cover, it's pretty oily. So you can see, you know what? Now I'm looking at it. That might actually be the pinion seal. Mm. Yeah, that might actually be the pinion seal, not the uh, diff cover because the diff cover wouldn't have it right here. It's coming back like that. So, hmm, do I change it anyway? I guess I do, because uh, I gotta change the uh, the wheel studs. But yeah, I think that might also be a problem that he has, is the pinion seal. So this rear end pretty much needs to be gone through. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call him and let him know, um, because I don't have the tools to do the, uh, the pinion. You gotta pull this whole thing apart. So I may suggest for him just to get the whole rear end done. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna be something we're gonna have to do later. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap these studs out so we can at least drive it for now. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's low on fluid because it's been leaking, looks like for quite some time. So we'll go ahead and uh, get it done. And then phase two of this car, I know we're gonna change the shocks, we're gonna do the brake system and stuff like that. Cause you see, if you can see there that the carbon, those are the original shocks. And you can see the control arms in there, the BMRs, the uppers up there somewhere but yeah there's the lower uh so oh shoot uh, uh so yeah still working on the ground until i get my lift i'm um, working on that now hopefully i'll have it by the end of the month it's gonna go right here where this car is i'm just gonna put the first one here and then decide where i'm gonna put the second one probably over here um the problem is when i have a car that's not running so that's my issue i'm running into now I got three cars currently that I need to work on that don't run. Um, so I'm trying to get these running cars out because once I bring the three running car, non-running cars in here, there will be really be nowhere to put anything else. So uh, this one will be done today. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, reseal the diff, put the longer studs in, put everything back together, and then I'm going to drive it home and park it at home in the garage to free up this space because I still have to send the computer off to get a uh, program. So while the computer's off getting program, I won't be able to drive it and I don't want it just taking up room for no reason. So I can still store it at the house. I still have my garages at the house. I just can't work there anymore. Um, so yeah, that was the whole reason for getting a shop. Code enforcement, the whole nine. So, uh, but I was already looking for a shop space. So it really kind of just, made me move a little faster but yeah so once i get this together this will be a today project um i'm gonna get everything together then i'll drive it home tonight just and then driving it too just making sure everything's good um i'll park it at home in the garage and then um i will uh probably drive my mercedes here tomorrow and then take the truck back home and i'll leave the mercedes here 
a couple things I need to do to that. So, and I can just, so I got plenty of space to park it. So, um, so yeah, so um, we'll snatch this diff cover off. Once you pull the diff cover off, I'll know. Actually, you know what? Look at this, look at this. So I'm working on this bent axle, trying to get this apart. So you can kind of see how it looks when you snatch off a diff cover. If you notice this rear end severely bent. So the problem I'm having now is I can't get the axles out because it's bent. So I even try cutting it. So this is what it looks like when you open it. This one's upside down because you can see the mounts there, but same concept. Once you open it, the axles come through and then there's a little C-clip that holds them in. So all you gotta do is push the axle, push it in, and you'll see it pop out there and you pull the C-clip and then you can pull the axle out. It's pretty simple. I'll show you the C-clip is right here. <clears throat> It's, it's not hard. It's a little intimidating if you've never done it. I mean, the first time I did it, I was kind of nervous, but so this is the C-clip here. You could just grab it with a, uh, with a magnet and basically it goes, there's a little notch in the axle there and it just goes in there and you pull it out and it keeps it in place. And then there's a, a pin, like a long pin. Um, I, I don't know where that is. It's around here somewhere, but there's a bolt that holds the pin in and then you pull that pin out and it allows you to remove the axles. Um, and then we'll just pull the axles out and swap over the studs and it'll be nice and safe. I'm actually gonna do it on my car too because I'm gonna be, uh, I wanna put slicks on my car at some point, take it to the track at some point. And at the track, you have to have a certain amount of thread showing um, on your wheel. So the the other 96 I did with the LS, um, they had to shorten the rear end to fit the bond speeds on there. They had already installed the longer studs, and so you can see if he ever wants to put slicks on it, he can put it on there. So I'm about to pull this diff cover off and um, get these axles out. And oh, I gotta put the car in neutral because you gotta be able to turn it. So that's no big deal. Oh, and. Uh, after I posted that video about the steering wheel, um, one of my subscribers, um, my boy Pablo, uh, you may know his car. It's a, uh, he used to have a, like a candy blue Impala with like gold wheels and gold trim. I mean, everything was gold. The, the Impala was gold. He had all this trim was gold. It was, it was a nice car. So he, um, we had, he had actually pulled up on me when I was at the house one time. Um, and we chopped it up, you know, and he was like, hey, bro, I got the tool. I can come, you know, knock that out for you. So he pulled up on me yesterday and uh, we got it knocked out. So the steering wheel's in. Uh, the only thing I have to do is put, uh, get a spade terminal to put the horn in and ground the the horn button. And once I do that, it'll be done. Oh, and then I got to get, I'm waiting on the resistor um, to come in from Amazon so for the airbag light, but... He did it in like 15 minutes. And like I said, I just never did it. You know, I tried and it didn't work. So I was like, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but he did it the same way I was doing it. I just think maybe the last car I was working on, it was just a little bit more tough. It was just seized on there a little tighter. Um, Cause I mean, when he did this one, it came right off. So, you know, now I know how to do it. I'm pretty sure I can do it myself now. So, um, so that'll be cool. Steering wheels in. Um, I'll get it all wrapped up by today. The only thing I can't do is the resistor, but I don't need the resistor to put the horn in and all that. That'll be, that's under the dash and I'll do that whenever that piece comes in. Um, Cause I still gotta send the computer off and all that. So pretty much once this is done today, it'll be drivable. We'll drive it home and then um, we'll send the PCM off and um, wait on the resistor to come for the horn not the horn, the ABS light. And then this car will go back to Kendall and he can come out caffeine and not, oh no, it won't be done by caffeine and not then because that's this Sunday. But he can, he can come out to the Atlanta meet on the 4Gs and stun on everybody. I mean, he was already the only one with chrome stocks. Like, <laughs> like everybody was jealous. I was like, man, where do you get them chrome stocks from? Everybody else had, you know, the regular, you know what they look like, but he's the only one in, in ink that I know of, like Atlanta that I know of that had the chrome stocks. And now he coming with the maglias on him. So let me get to work. I'm trying to make every day that I'm here productive.
Um, it's about a 15 to 20 minute drive from home, which is a hell of a lot longer commute than I used to have walking out my garage door. So I try to make every day that I get here productive. Let me get one project completely done from start to finish. And then it makes it worth the drive and getting everything done. So like I said, the goal for today, get this car completely pretty much done, like rear end done, studs in, steering wheel done, and then we'll drive it home. And then I may start on this, a few things on this, but I want to put one of the non-running cars here. And then I'm going to put the other non-running, I got a truck, a Suburban, I have to put an engine in here. And I want to put them here and then I'll leave that open for cars that can come in and out. Almost forgot. I uh, have a few goodies that I got from Andy. Um, I had to go up there and pick up some stuff yesterday. I didn't film. I was kind of rushing, trying to get some stuff knocked out and move some stuff. But uh, ULS people like myself are going to love this. So exhibit A, we got a 5.3 that's rebuilt. Um, stock cam, new timing pump, new bearings, new cam, new cam bearings, new chain, everything. This is going into a 2003 Suburban um, that I that I have to do. So it's at the house now to be over here in a few days. Um, it was just a in, rebuild, in and out, quick job. This is an LQ9 six liter. See the flat top pistons that I pulled from the junkyard out of an Escalade. And this is actually going in my Silverado. Um, I took it to the machine shop because the balancer was seized on there. I had Andy pull it off, check the engine over. He was like, you know, if you want to, we can go through it, but it's in pretty decent shape. So I'm trying to keep it pretty much budget. So I'm just gonna throw it in there and hope for the best. I mean, I pulled the lifters, the lifters look great. The cam looked good. Um, the heads look good, but I had the heads redone. So um, that's gonna go into Silverado at some point. And then we got heads on heads on heads. So these are 706s, I believe. Yep, these are 706s. These are for this engine. We got some 243s that are currently for sale. I got them listed on Marketplace for 600. Uh, they I mean, fresh from the machine shop. Haven't been mounted yet. Uh, they've got Texas Speed dual springs on them. And then, oh, these got dual springs too. Oh, this is the other, <laughs> this is the other head. And then we got a set of 317s with uh, Z06 springs in them that are going on the LQ9. I was gonna put the 243s on the LQ9, but I don't plan on camming it. Um, so from what I understand, because of the smaller cylinder, um, on the smaller cylinder on the 243 heads, and the high compression LQ9, it builds up too much cylinder pressure. And with a stock cam, it's not gonna run right. So I decided to just do the 317s with a stock cam. Cause going in my daily, I tow with it. I just want it to run smooth. Cause I have a cam in it now and I'm not happy with it. So um, yeah, so we're gonna do the 317s on the LQ9. It'll just be pretty much a stock LQ9 with upgraded springs. I may put the cam that's in there, maybe but I don't know. Um, and that's gonna go in the Silverado, 706 is on the 5.3 in the Suburban, and the 243s are for sale. I had a couple people hit me up. There's a guy supposed to be coming today to get them. Um, if he doesn't get them by the time this video comes out, um, hit me up on Instagram, OTG Mechanic, if you're interested. I'm in the heads more than $600, I'll tell you right now. I'm in them probably 750, because I paid 300 for them and probably another 400 in machine work and shit, I'm in them a, a lot because then the springs too. So I'm definitely taking L on them, but I just don't need them right now. And I need to recoup some money from getting the shop. And there's a couple things I need to buy for the shop. So I need them gone. Um, so let me get to work because I've been talking. So let me get to work, get this thing done so we can drive it home.
sorry in advance for the fan, but it's it's hot. Alright. Sorry in advance for the fan, but it's hot. Um, so I got the fan going. But I uh, got the cover off. Uh, fluid is draining. Sprayed a little brake clean in there to help it out. Um, so yeah, you gotta take this bolt out right here. And then this pin will slide out. And then all you gotta do is push the axle in and the seat clip will fall out. You gotta turn it back. I got the car in neutral right now. So I'm gonna pull that bolt out, get the pin out, and I'll show you um, how to get the axles out. I mean, like I said, it's pretty pretty straightforward. And then we'll clean. Once I get all that done, pull the axles out, swap the the studs over. I'm still waiting on all those over to bring them to me. I only have like four of them here right now, maybe five. So I may be able to get one axle all the way done um, and then wait on the other five. Um, so let me get this apart and uh, I'll show you how to do it. It's usually an eight millimeter. This. pin out so I'll set in there and then we need to get this out um, so usually you can reach up behind it and push it down like that and it'll just slide right out some of them are a little tougher uh, that's actually the easiest I've ever had one come out all right so now I need my magnet well, sometimes when you push it, it'll fall. So we'll do we'll do passenger side first. Is it pushed in already? No. So hopefully you saw it push in. The C clip should just come right. Coming out. Uh, the struggle. Oh, there it is. Yep. There's a C clip. Boom. So it's the C clip. And now the axle will just pull right out. So pretty easy and then uh, I'll take the take the axle over to the bench and we'll press these uh, lug studs out and get the new ones in it's not too bad a little contraption I mean you can make this many different ways but it's just a I don't know what this is from and then a washer and then the right lug nut um, so I put this 
Uh, like that, put the washer, put a lug nut. Start it on there to where it's snug. A few uggadugas. One. That's it. So you'll get get them in there, and now you got longer studs. So put this other uh, put this other axle back in. I already finished the the other side. We'll get this axle in. Um, clean up the timing cover because it's all rusty. I'll paint it, make it look nice. Put some RTV, stick it on there, fill it with fluid, take it home. Man, I I just get in the zone and start working and forget all about the camera. Um, needless to say, I'm done. So now we got a good, good, um, engagement of threads. So both sides are done. Um, I actually took it, drove it to AutoZone to go pick up some small spade terminals that I needed and an air filter for that car out there. And we got the, uh, steering wheel fully installed now so it's horn works so we're gonna take it home put it in the garage at the house um pull the pcm send it off to keith at pcm for less have him uh tune it for the pc for the wheels and you know i already went over all that so this one's pretty much done um for now until he brings it back for all the other stuff that uh we're gonna do um this one change the mass airflow sensor it's good to go i just got to put an air filter on it i'm going to pull it in here in a second and put just a little specter air filter on it um and i got a bunch of assorted tubes and stuff like that that's really the main thing um i sent him um some videos of the car running did a mean burnout uh so i'm pretty sure he'll be happy with that and uh, hopefully we can get this car picked up and out of here. And then this one will be gone at the house. So I'll have room for two cars and I have a Suburban coming. Um, 2003 Z71 that I'm uh, rebuilding the engine on. Well, I already re got the short block rebuilt. Uh, so bottom end is done. I just gotta stick the lifters in, put the cam, we'll put the cam in, stick the lifters in, put the chain on get the pump all dialed in, uh, put the heads on it, and it'll be ready to drop into that Suburban. That should be about a day's worth of work. Hopefully I can get that in and out quickly. Um, and I'll move some stuff around because I want to get that, I want to get that one done by Monday because I have another car coming, well, today's what, Wednesday? Hmm. I think I'm gonna stay a little while and get that engine together because I got all the parts right here. I just ordered some more bolts that just came in. But I got all the lifters and all that in these two boxes that were actually for my 6.0, but we'll get this one taken care of first. So I may stay today. Um, I wasn't about to leave. I was about to go home. It's beautiful out today. I mean, it's probably 65 degrees right now in Atlanta. It's a beautiful day. Uh, it wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. It was great. So I was hoping to cruise this thing home, you know, while it was still bright out, but gotta work comes first so i'm gonna uh slide this thing out and i'll uh, probably take it over into the middle over there so i got more light or i might just build it right here it shouldn't be too bad um and i'm going to get the get the valve train put together get the cam in timing chain get everything ready um tomorrow i'll grab some covers i gotta get a front cover i think it's got a rear cover on it yeah it's got a new rear cover so I'll get a front cover tomorrow. I may be able to get one today. Um, get a front cover for it. Slap that on there. Customer wants the engine painted blue. Slap the heads on it. I got valve covers. 
and get it ready to drop in. The, um, the intake for it is in the truck. All the exhaust manifolds, all the other parts for this engine are in the truck at the house. So once I get the engine pretty much ready to go, I want to, that's my goal tonight to get this ready to be pretty much dropped in. Um, cause I still got to get like, uh, oil pressure sender, cam sensor. I'm going to replace all that stuff. So, um, I think I have a cam sensor on this motor I can use. Yep. And I just got to get a oil pressure sensor. I have one around here somewhere. So get that motor together, get it ready to be dropped into suburban. Hopefully I can get the suburban here maybe Friday. Um, and then, or maybe Thursday, maybe tomorrow I can get it here. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that because it doesn't run and I don't have a winch on my trailer yet. So I'll get it here and then um, try to get that motor dropped in and get it running by, by Monday and get it out of here. Um, so that'll be one less thing to worry about. And then I have a 96 Impala at the house I'm doing an LS swap on. I think the last thing I gotta do in that is the fuel system. So that'll be easy. Get the fuel system done, it'll be ready to fire up. And then I have another 96 Impala coming, a client of mine um, sat at a shop for like two years and they they got it running, but they used like a standalone harness for it, like a PSI harness. So originally he hit me up to get the cluster done. He was like, yeah, my cluster doesn't work, it has a swap. And I looked at the harness and I mean, it was, I'll and then this car, I'll get to working on this, but I'll probably start on this after I get the Suburban gone. Um, because like I said, I, I only have room in here for about three vehicles. I can squeeze four, uh, but three comfortably. And since I'm gonna have three non-running vehicles, um, once I start on this, this won't be able to be moved, but I can probably get it movable in a day. So I'm not too worried about this because I've got all this stuff for it over here. This is all the, I actually have to go through and see what I have because I ordered all this stuff like a month ago. So I got another box over there I need to bring and see exactly what I have for this car um, so I can go ahead and do it. But this car is going to be here a while, so I'm not too worried about it because um, there's still other parts I have to order that I haven't got yet. Um, so I may just get the front knocked out, get the shocks in there, and then we got to order the rear stuff and then we're putting a full sound system in it. So um, we'll get that situated. And that's about it, guys. So in and out job. Um, looks way better and then you see it's still flush so they don't stick out like a race car they're flush so it just grabs a little better I, mean, I just feel a lot better about that so we'll get we'll um take this home and send the computer off and it would be good and again thank you everybody for your comments the congratulations um everything is definitely appreciated